all of us fall short of it. Where some seemingly are living better, they're doing it because they're able to kill who they want, rob who they want, and take from who they want. We see this fantasy and mess out in the White House, in Washington. Everybody knew Trump was a crook, but Trump is no bigger crook than Clinton, or Bush, or even Obama. They were all, don't just clap for that, said Obama. Well, you don't even know why he was there. Well, Obama can do his best. But he's one of the wealthiest men in the country. Why is he worried? They got him in the 40th wealthy in the country. He's probably the fourth wealthiest president ever in the history of America. But you don't know his story because you don't study history. You don't know that his stepfather was one of the big oil men in Indonesia. Or one of the biggest oil companies in Asia. And the trust fund that he left for them. You don't understand how people come in your community and pick the cream of your crop and groom them mm -hmm. to put in position over you in time because they can see ahead what their plan is. And they can do that because they know who they are and you don't know who you are. So look back at that history. And look back at the invasion, starting with the Hicks, the Hicks, the Hicks off. What happened in Africa when this thing occurred? With each of these invasions from the north, we go south. Do you know the Zulu used to live in Kenya? Mm -hmm. How did the Zulus get from Kenya to South Africa? Do you know the Yorubas used to live in Egypt? Mm -hmm. And the Ga of Ghana used to live in Palestine? Yeah. But you gotta study history to know that. And then you get an understanding of what the fight is about. It isn't about white people don't like you. White people don't even know how to like white people. <laughs> this fight is not about that. They do it in the movies sometimes, and you almost get it. This is really a fight about good and evil in a way. They said, you who should be good at become evil. <laughs> evil is having a ball. We talk about the law of opposites, the balance in nature. We are the balance that's out of balance. And unless we get our things together, this imbalance will persist. We've got some people who govern us, who we voted for, who says we don't care if our leadership is a criminal. We will violate every code of conduct of the country in order to keep our party criminal <laughs> in place. It has nothing to do with constitution, nothing to do with ethics, nothing to do with morals, nothing to do with principles, nothing to do with law. But guess what? It's always been like that. It is that with all this new technology and information sharing, it is an opportunity for us to see the emperor without any clothes. But do we know what we are looking at? There's never been anyone in there better than Trump. We just can see him more clearly than we saw the others. He's nothing but a pawn in the game. He works for the military industrial complex, certain banking interests, certain corporate interests, for the purpose of doing what? See, at the end of the day, it's so pathetic. He said, oh, they want to build white society. No, they don't. They don't give a damn about white people either. That's why you have all of the crazy little poor white folks from the right going fanatical over Trump. Because somebody dumped them in the trash since the 1600s. They hadn't gotten out of that trash can yet. <laughs> but they don't understand that they're in the trash can. You're talking about people, you see the Harvey Weinstein thing? That's why they do this. So they can drink the best wine in the world. So they can ravish and misuse and rape any woman they want to get away with. It. So that they can live in creature comfort opulence. That's why they do this. Not for no any grand reason, because they got some secret society we call it the Illuminati. Stop lying to yourself, because most of you don't even know what the hell the Illuminati is. And people look at all the ladies and all the Illuminati killed Brother Brian. The Illuminati kills all of us all the time because the Illuminati is your own fantasy. Mm -hmm. Even if white folks got an organization they call the Illuminati, he breathes the same air you breathe, he walks upright like you walk, 
it goes to the bathroom like you do. How dare you belittle yourself enough to think that that thing, because they call themselves something, could have dominance over you? Think about it. So let's come back. We start to pull it all kind of, we all kind of scatter right now. Oh Lord, that was wrong. If you want to experience freedom, you've got to learn how to know yourself. If you want to experience freedom, you must learn how to know yourself. And you gotta stop putting things out there in these big, unattainable possibilities. This thing fundamentally that we're fighting about is can we provide, or how can we provide, food, clothing, shelter, safety, security for ourselves and our family. Bottom line for everything you do. Bottom line, why are you going to college? I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer. No, you're going to college, you want to make some money. Why do you want to make some money? I got to go buy some food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security. <laughs> So let's get back to basics. Tell the truth to your mind. In order to provide food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security, I gotta get control of the economics and the politics and the culture and the geographic community where I live. And when I do that, I must be the one that is empowered in the area of land, labor, and resources. But I can't get there because I don't know who I am. I don't know who it is that's trying to get there. Then he says, well, what if I know who I am? I learned about me personally. No, you don't exist as an individual. You are an African being which makes up the African body. That's who you are. But you've got to know who this is to know what your relationship is to that. Right? So history, again, is the foundation of all of this. History is the foundation. So that we can begin to reconstruct. If you were to go, and I know there's some of you in here that's in groups and organizations, take any 10 block square of Houston and do a process we call mapping. That means you go into that 10 block square and you have your pad, like this one I wrote all these notes on that I'm not going to use tonight. So you have pad. And you say, what is the block and lot number of every building on every block in the 10 block square? You know what the block and lot number is? So you can go to the records department and see who owns the building. And then you come back and look at the usage. And these buildings in this 10 block square, how many is used for retail? How many is used for wholesale? How many is used for service industry? How many is used for homes? If you want revolution, this is what you got to do. 